probably 10 years ago, Spike, huh? yeah, through a mutual time. friend uh, with whom I was in the service in uh, the big war in, in Germany. And uh, he had sent me some tapes. And this was a tape of uh, Spike playing with the uh, Boulder Symphony. That's where Spike is from. Uh, and uh, I was very impressed, really. I mean, it was just wonderful. And I wrote back and I said, who's the saxophone player? And uh, he told me it was Spike and so forth. And eventually I was invited to Boulder to uh, do uh, one of these little jazz parties that my, our mutual friend puts on. And uh, Spike and I met and uh, the friendship began then. <laughs> Not water from the <laughs> I don't know whether I got him in trouble or he got me in trouble, <laughs> but we both went the same route after that. The music scene was pretty bad about 1948, and I, I was looking to do something different. And, and about that time, the Navy came up with a, a great program uh, that you could go out and audition at the Navy Music School, and if you passed, you could join the Navy, and you're guaranteed to be a musician for the four years, uh, or three years, actually, that you signed up for, and then they gave, for good behavior, they gave us an extra one. That was during the Korean War. And uh, so uh, I was also, of course, very fortunate because I was only at the music school for about six months. It was normally a year course. But I was a, the top clarinetist in the school, and, and they needed a clarinetist over in the London band, so, so they offered it to me, and uh, I grabbed it and came over here for three, three and a half years, something like that. It's a different world today than it was back in yeah. the uh, 50s, yeah, Spike, you, you know, when it. people weren't listening to each other and there was a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, uh, categorizing, and if you weren't in the certain bag, nobody spoke with you. That's a lot different today. I mean, yeah. we're, everybody's listening to, to everybody. I mean, you know, sure. we worked Ronnie Scott's with, uh, you know, Roy Ayers, and, and we listened to what what they, they were doing, yeah. and they were listening to what we were doing, and uh, there was a mutual respect there for the musicianship that, that prevailed. I think people know a lot more about it today than they did yeah. years ago. And they have more respect for the jazz artists because they realize that it's quite a creative process that's going on when we're playing. I mean, we're not just standing up on a stage and listening to our fairy god while they you know, sing these melodies that we're playing. I mean, there's a lot more to it than uh, people realized years ago. Well, I think the, the, the general public had a different view uh, than we ever experienced when we, even back in the old days. Uh, we had uh, absolutely zero uh, racial problems or anything else, anything other than getting awfully irritated with the general public sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, but there was none of that. It was, uh, even when there was this competitiveness and this cutting stuff, we were all good friends through the, the bind of music, you know. And it didn't matter color, religion, anything else. <laughs> it crossed all if, boundaries. If really. you blew well and, and things worked, uh, you couldn't care less. You know, we never even thought, gave thought to that. Now, the general public's view might be that they're a bunch of uh, kind of weird characters, you know, because we did. You know, I can remember zoot suits and all that type thing I used to wear. <laughs> zoot suits. You know, and stuff, you know, and uh, so they probably thought we were quite weird, but. Uh, uh, but then you look at the, the pop, pop crowd today, and I gotta think they're kind of weird too, you know. An instrument, if they have the desire, and I think this is the, really the motivating factor in anybody uh, excelling, how much desire they have, how badly they really want to play that instrument. 
And it's not only people who have innate talent, you know, some people have a latent talent, you know. Some people don't realize, you know, how well they can draw until they try later on. So uh, I think that it is quite possible to teach people to at least be able to get some pleasure out of playing. I have no regrets myself because I was still able to play, you know. I mean, I was involved in music. As an educator, I was a music teacher. So uh, I, I had some very, very nice, nice moments in the classroom uh, teaching about music uh, to the best of my ability. And uh, I have always had a, a concern for the lay person maybe even a little more so than the person who is talented and is going to excel anyway, but to try to develop some kind of a, a you know, a, a nice attitude towards music with the kids in school who didn't have the background, because they're the ones, you know, as they grow up, who are going to come and listen to mm -hmm. us play. And in retrospect, uh, I think I would do the same thing again, but I would probably spend less time with the talented and more time in the classroom. Every night when we go out and play, we play our best. And we play it first and foremost for us. Do you feel that way, Spike? Yeah, some I nights mean, you get your Grammy. Right. And some nobody nights, knows and, it and, except you. And we come you. to terms with ourselves every night. And, you know, sometimes you're reasonably happy with what you've done, and sometimes you're not. But thank God, you know, there's another time, you say, next okay. time. But uh, <clears throat> I, I feel that way. I feel like uh, I, I really want to play well for myself and I think if, if, if I'm going to be satisfied then there's a reasonable assumption that the audience will be somewhat pleased. Well to get in the, to be in this facet of jazz business uh, obviously it's not involved with money <laughs> you know it's pure satisfaction <laughs> and uh, and as long as you can get some satisfaction out of it then that's your that's your payback you know Unfortunately, that's the situation, but it'll always be, it always was, as far as I know. And, yeah, you can go out and, and change the, everything from, from doing what you're doing uh, and bend it towards what, what makes money and that type of thing, but uh, not at my age. I'm not about to. <laughs> I think fact, it's nice that we've, had, I didn't go into it. that we've had the opportunity to record Spike. Oh, yeah, and, and yeah. Leave something like that. Uh, <laughs> Not that we're all that thrilled with what we've done, but uh, evidently uh, we are being successful at it. So uh, that kind of makes me feel good that there'll be something left for posterity. <laughs>